Well, hello there, guys. It is Quirty Afro. Welcome back to another video. Today, I am back in Metro Simulator. It's been quite a while since I've done any kind of coverage on this game. I think the last time I actually covered it was like in the update 3.12, and currently we're on 3.14. And boy, there is a lot of updates and stuff with it. Um, look, I'm just going to just get right in because uh, right now I am not even on the normal map that you'd see. I'm on a new map that's actually been added recently in the recent uh, two updates that have come out, which I've not covered. I think my last video was like somewhere last year in 2017, so it's quite a long time. Uh, this is the, actually the Glasgow subway, and uh, it's one of the new maps, and uh, like Symbolette's been updated, and Rhine Dam has been heavily updated. A lot of stuff, new, a lot of new lines, a lot of new trains. Let me just turn off the AI here so my train just doesn't run away from me. In today's video, I'm going to do a little bit of a, uh, uh, a uh, Glasgow subway route. Uh, obviously, there's only two lines on the Glasgow subway, the inner line and the outer line. I'm going to be doing the inner line. I'm actually starting from the Ibrox. If I'm saying that, Ibrox, Ibrox, Ibrox. Um, Ibrox, Ibrox, I don't know. Ibrox um, depot. And uh, we'll do our like uh, inner, uh, inner line today. Let's actually get going because I don't want to... I don't want to uh, be delayed. So we just it's, it's just a quick like turn right here on the right end and we're down straight away into the tunnels. I'm not going to go too fast. But we're actually driving a 1973 stock, which is also something a bit out of the blue. Because obviously um, uh, this is not the correct stock for the actual line. There's the Glasgow subway stock. I think it's, I don't think the actual Glasgow subway stock has an actual name. I think it's literally just called the Glasgow uh, Glasgow subway um, uh, stock. Uh, but this is a 1973 stock off the Piccadilly line, and there is a free car um, London Underground livery. Uh, 1973 stock available to actually play on the Rhine Dam map on one of the new lines, which I think is called M7. It's only like three or four stops. Very small line, but it's cool. Like the sounds are pretty authentic to the 1973 stock. And I think there's also an announcement with the underground livery um, variant. But as we get now, now we're fully in the tunnels, immersed. There's no more daylight, no more, no more, uh, no more natural light. No stock here waiting for us. And it's only two car, because um, obviously these, these, this stock, this 1973 stock, or any kind of tube stock, is actually much uh, bigger. Um, uh, I think the gauge of the, uh, of like a normal tube stock is the same as like the the normal kind of gauge in the UK, like the normal standard gauge. But for the Glasgow subway, it's actually I think slightly shorter because these trains, the, the train, the Glasgow subway stock is actually slightly smaller in real life. They're very small trains. Like I'm pretty sure if I actually walked into one of them, I definitely have to kind of like slightly crouch. I think if anyone that's over kind of like six foot, it'd be a bit difficult. Okay, we are here at Ibrox. Perfect. I'm just going to put on the AI and turn it off there. Good. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, before we actually get going, I actually have a few things to actually um, say with, like, obviously, shout-outs. Shout-outs in this video go to Thomas Walsh and Naihumyoa, if I'm saying that right. That's, again, Thomas Walsh and Thomas Walsh and Naihumyoa. Their links and stuff will be down below. Show them some love. If you like a shout-out, please use the Quirky Forms link down below. Also, a special uh, shout-out, exclusive shout-out, if you like, because uh, my channel uh, recently has been now allowed to get that. Uh, if you look down below my video, you can see, like, a join button. So it's, like, similar to kind of, like... Um if I was to have like a Patreon account or whatever where you can like basically join or like think of it as like a Twitch subscription button 
basically so my channel now can have that on youtube and i'd rather keep stuff like that because i've never really tried I, I tried doing a patreon many years ago i didn't really like like doing it because it was very separate to youtube i felt it was very separate so at least now there's something exclusive to youtube and all the kind of perks that i offer with it are exclusive to youtube i have a first member that's actually joined and that is kurt stewart so thank you very much to kurt stewart for joining the members club all members that join will get this in every single video at the beginning a nice little shout out there and their links and stuff will be always down below so always give a check out to everyone in the description below uh, some of the packs that come included are like um, being having like an exclusive shout out all the time in my videos uh, you members will be able to get videos accessed uh, one day earlier before everyone else and also I'm going to be doing some uh, giveaways for members uh, each month uh, once I like reach like at least five members and then I'll be like doing every month like giveaways for my members just to let you know their little FYI right so let's sink over doors I like the authentic sounds let's get rolling One thing there with the sound is that obviously this game, I don't know why this game, um, there is a bit of an issue I find with the, um, I can only play it in, um, in a windowed mode for some reason. I think before like I could easily play it in, um, in, uh, in full screen mode, but for some reason like now I can't seem to get the config for the, before you like start the game to kind of like change the setting for some reason. So if anyone knows, please let me down, know in the comments down below how to change it back to full screen. You won't actually notice anything because I've cropped the video to kind of like not include like the window bar and my task bar, etc. So it doesn't look anything different for you guys, but for me it's, um, it is window. Or maybe I could just use a different like recording software to just record that window only. Right, we are at Cressnock. And with the London Underground variant of this uh, train that's available on the uh, Rhindam map on line M7, I do believe when you open the doors or when you close the doors, there's like an announcement that says, please mind the doors or something like that, or please mind the gap or something like that. On the SBT kind of um, variant here, it doesn't have any sort of thing, but the, 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 the interior as well is really nice. It actually has like um, SBT kind of branding and stuff like that. On the underground one on Rhindam as well, this actual display here for the destination or like the next station actually works with the destination board that's um, linked to the uh, to the one outside. So in so in um, so when you like set the destination board, it reflects what's actually said inside the train as well for the passengers, which I think is a very kind of cool thing um, they added there. Right. So clear the doors, this train's ready to depart. Let's get going. It's a bit weird driving like an underground train in Metro Simulator. Never, I, I think some of the kind of cool ideas and projects and stuff that is still kind of going to be coming up with this game is so fascinating. Like, I think an S-Stock is being made, I think a D-Stock is being made, a 1996 stock is being made. So, they're really going like... They're really going like full hand with the kind of different trains and stuff like that. On Rhindam as well, I think it's the SG slash two um, Rotterdam Metro train uh, has finally been released. It's one train that I've been always wanting to kind of play on Metro Simulator, but never seems to have been released in any of the updates before. It's finally now available. And I do believe there is a Russian metro that's available on one of the lines. I think M M four or M six. I think runs it. It's it's literally like you know. If you, I, I think it's the Moscow metro Russian trains metro stock trains. Like you know the, that kind of like blue. That's the only way I can describe them. They they have that distinct Russian kind of blue metallic look. And. They're available to play now in Metrosim. 
So there's a lot for me to actually do and cover in Metro Sim now. So any of you guys that were like, oh, where's Metro Sim? When's it coming back to the channel? Oh, you need to do this. I'm surprised. Not many people like told me like of the updates and stuff with Metro Simulator. Normally, like a years ago, people were like, oh, can you do this? Oh, it's been updated. But literally, everyone's been quiet with Metro Simulator. I've not like if someone told me, oh, they've included the Glasgow subway in Metro Simulator, I would have jumped back on it a lot sooner than later. But no one told me, no one reminded me. So I just like, oh, I was I was thinking, oh, there's not much going on in Metro Simulator. And then just the other day, really, I just kind of looked on it and I was like, I was like, oh, wow, they they've they've actually like released quite a lot of stuff. Like I was looking at the the three point one four update they updated like grind them so much like it, there's actually trams and now you can drive trams on that route there's like three tram lines or four maybe potentially i think four and you can you can you can drive trams on it on the roads and there's also like this massive uh there's this uh like fast line i can't remember what it's called like the map online uh, on the wiki page for Metro Simulator's your best friend really because you can get all the kind of information that you need of like all the lines that are available all the trains that you can drive etc um, and there's also tutorials and stuff for how to make your own kind of like activities which are like um, scenarios in this game but I'm pretty impressed like and even this model is pretty good for a 1973 stock obviously it's a two car 1973 stop but you know what i mean it's really nice and it's a simple game it's always been like it's there's nothing being been really like well it's actually no i don't want to discredit this game for like not being complex or anything it is complex in a way like it has a sophisticated ai system that works um the the map feels dynamic with the kind of ais it's spread not in this kind of map because obviously this is very much so a very like linear circular map with maybe a couple of trains running around in a circle but on some of the other maps, like from Simvilla and in Rindem, there's definitely a lot of complexities with AI and the way that services and stuff like that work. There's kind of like destination board that is just really cute in this in this map. It's really cool. Like um, there's like different like uh, messages and stuff that are like train approaching as well, which that's just uh, that means I I need to basically get moving. Also, passenger view, which is something uh, I don't think. Um, uh, certain trains still don't have it on this game. Some trains, I think more of the kind of newer ones that have been updated with this map, or with any of the maps, um, they come with passenger views. Some of them still just don't come with passenger views. But it's not that bad. And obviously some of the kind of things that have been updated in terms of like, obviously, night, I think night mode was something that I think even when I, from my like last video I covered on this game, uh, it was something that was already included in and a lot of the lighting dynamics and tunnels have been improved It's just all around like really cool stuff like I downloaded the update and I just I sat and I played throughout most of the lines and stuff on um, on um, on Rhine Dam especially I think Symbolet pretty much doesn't have much left in it like it's unless they do some extensions and stuff like that I, it's pretty much complete from like the last time i've driven on it but definitely uh, like uh furthering and continuing on with the series on my channel it's definitely going to be looking at rhine dam and doing all the different lines and all the kind of variations you can do on uh, on um, on rhine dam uh especially i want to like showcase the tram network I want to showcase this uh, the rapid transit line, which is like a kind of like think of it like all the normal lines on Rhine Dam are like the metro lines, and then you have like this one sort of like overground sort of line, or it's like you know national rail kind of service line, just to kind of put it in like a, in an example that you guys can like relate to. But it's cool. There's so much stuff and so much variety and stuff that you can do on that on that map, and it's just it's such it's really cool. I, like you won't get bored with it at the end of the day if you don't want to do like an activity like normally what i tend to do in an activity i load in the activity and obviously because the ai can take over and just do the train um operation for me it means i can just go explore around the map click on a train or whatever and just take over and just continue doing the service all right we are at bridge street 
all the kind of advertising and stuff like that, I think, is as well really spot on. And um, to be honest, the resolution and stuff, all of the, some of these adverts and stuff are really good. I think we're a little bit tad late because. Um, Actually, no, we're actually caught up a bit. I've been, like, quite vigilant now in these, like, couple of last stops because now the next inner departure is in two minutes instead of, like, one minute. But we still have a, we still have a way to go. I'm obviously doing a um, full circle off the, off the metro. Um, so, Ibrox, Ibrox, Ibrox. And what's cool, would obviously, with these activities, you, you like, have, like, a, you can actually do, like, a full cycle, a full kind of shift, kind of a simulated shift. Like, right now, you can see it's, like, depot to Ibrox, Ibrox to Govan, Govan to Govan, Govan to Govan, and then back to the depot. So if you wanted to, like, sit here for, like, an hour or two and, you know, actually sort of do a, a, a kind of driving shift, you could, and then you can return back to the depot. This station is St. Enoch. St. Enoch's. I think the 1973 stock in orange looks actually pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. And the station models are really, like, done well. Like, you know, I've never been to the Glasgow um, subway but this this all looks i've watched kind of a lot of videos because it interests me it's a really interesting um really interesting subway it's really cool like, it's so small and it's kind of convenient like you know like obviously it's not going to be it's not going to be like able to compete with like the tube but it, you know, it does its job. It carries people around Glasgow. It's a quick form of transport. I do you believe as well they are updating the current stock to um, to new units that uh, have been ordered from uh, Stadler. I do believe. And those trains look funky. I saw some uh, pictures of it on uh, Twitter from the. Uh, that event that they showcase trains at, like uh, I think it's called Inno, I think. I don't, I'm not too sure, but I saw pictures of the new stock and it looks really cool. And they look, they they're setting it up to kind of be like driverless, so similar to like DLR kind of setup where there's no actual cab at the front. But if a driver wanted to take over, or like an agent, a travel, a travel agent, whatever they call it, on the the people that work on the DLR, they can just open up a console. And I think it's really clever the way they did it on these new Glasgow subway trains is that uh, it's in the seat, so you just fold the seat over and then con uh, then uh, like controls and stuff like that pop out, which is cool. And then I think one side of the train is like a traditional cab. So I think, I don't know, the way they were specking it um, was like to give the option that it could be driverless or it could be like traditionally operated by a train operator. So, you know, we'll see means maybe I need to get go up to Glasgow and have a ride on these on the old stock before the new stock comes in. But as usual, I'll leave the link down below uh, to where you can get this game. It's just the same old website. It just has the updated um, uh, installer to download. And I think now with 3.14, it's only available on 64-bit. So I don't know if that means that like 32-bit users can't play this, which I don't think. I think you should be able to still play it if, if you're on 32-bit. But it does say that it's 64-bit only. But there is an available like older update. So if you if you can't play the latest update on 64-bit. Then you can download an older one, which should cater to like 32 bit. Right. Have a little pause at the next station, see how I've. Uh, I think I promptly caught up, I think, in terms of the scheduling. 
because obviously these trains aren't massively frequent like they are frequent um but not like victoria line frequent like one every minute because i think i read on wikipedia that like uh about 36,000 people a daily ridership on these on the Glasgow subway which is not bad like it's it takes around half an hour to get around the whole system so and obviously with being like such a small like you know small trains free cars short platforms it's uh, it's not gonna you know if like half a million people used it a day I don't think it would be able to cope it's just not a, pl a plausible uh, system. This station is St. George's Cross. Always running late from Buchanan Butch Street to Hillhead in eight minutes. Long lies are still on. I like these, I like the, the advertisement. The coolest and quickest means of travelling is by the subway. Yeah. How are we doing? Oh, not too bad. At least two minute interval there is still good. Let people get off the train first, I like that. It's just nice little cool little extra, extra little messages. And the train approaching things really cool. I think that's also something on, uh, on Rhine Dam that's uh, updated to the display signs. Which is like, you know, because I think, but I don't think on uh, the old destination boards, on like when I used to play it on like Simba, it would tell you when a train's approaching. It would like have that little symbol thing of like the, the train kind of like in transit or something like that. Like, yeah, this little thing. But it wouldn't say train approaching. But I think if we wait here, it probably will probably come soon. But and any worry about my own train, not the train that's behind me. an automatic train protection thing on so I can't speed over like up here in the uh, left on the screen where I have like my information for the destination it tells me like this max speed of the line and that's like can put it into the train that I can't I can't actually I can't actually breach that right Calvin Bridge This is an inner line Glasgow Metro service to, I don't know, it's just an inner line train. There's no destination, there's no terminus really, it just keeps going. One thing that's cool, you can also open these doors. I actually don't know what the uh, key for it, I think it's like control shift something. I don't want to trust it, test it out, but some of these newer trains now that have been added in the game, you can actually open like the driver doors, which is pretty cool. going but I think I think definitely the Glasgow Metro should be like named as one of like the most funkiest metros subways out there like it's quirky as hell like the trains are orange and it had the nickname of the clockwork orange or something like that like that's a cool nickname for a subway and if you guys would like to tell me any other subways that are like quirkier or funkier, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions. And tell me what your thoughts are. If any of you guys have been actually playing on the new 3.14 update or even the previous one that I didn't play as well, let me know down below like what do you guys think of this game and what, what do you think about like the actual progress and stuff and the additions. Um, like, I know right now there's Simbolet, there's Rindem, there's this Glasgow metro map. I think there's a small little accurate Rotterdam metro map with, like, a, one little short line with a couple of stops. Uh, and I think there's one more. But I know there's a few that's in, like, development. Right. 
this is Hillhead. And here you have like a split of, um, a split of, um, destination boards. See, the next train here on the out is four minutes. So technically I should have a four minute gap between my train, but I have a two minute gap. Report anything suspicious. See, I like that. Nice little, nice sort of touch there. It just gives, it gives nice, um, it gives the environment a nice kind of dynamic feel. Even though it's so small, it's like so like little. Like most people won't even like bother to look at that or, you know, have any notice. But I like looking at that and that's with like these kind of train games and stuff. It's the small little stuff that like really captures my attention in these kind of games. So when like... When I when I like I, when I play Train Sim World and I'm thinking this is a really advanced kind of like modern game and it doesn't have something which I don't think is that that you know complex and difficult to implement because you know like you should have scripts and stuff like that for for your AI like if you if you make scenarios and stuff like that you know where your AI is so you should be able to you know code something and script something to basically show it in like a visual form of like this AI is this um, like you know this distance and time away and just translate that to a time that you can put on a destination board like I don't know maybe it's more complex than I'm actually talking about I don't obviously know about coding and scripting but like if this game that's free done by developers can script something like this with like their kind of like complex AI kind of system that they have in this game then I'm pretty sure Dovetail could do that in Train Sim World even though they have promised that destination boards will be implemented at some point who knows where that some point will be but I'm still waiting These are the 1973 stock, and I think the 1972 stock on the Bakerloo line are actually going to be replaced soon. Um, they're getting replaced by uh, Siemens built uh, tube trains. I think the contract went to Siemens, which is great. I I, I, I like that there's going to be some variety. I was really scared at like a, a point where um, when the 2009 stock came out. Um, I think they were saying that the next upgrade would be on the Piccadilly line where they're going to use 2014 stock, which is very similar to the 20, uh, 2009 stock on the Victoria line, but just like updated for the Piccadilly line. And I was like, oh, but that's going to just mean that we're going to have same looking trains on the whole network. And I kind of don't really want that. Like, you know, the, the, all these subsurface lines are now all S stock. There's no variation anymore in, in trains. And you know, it's great, like, obviously from a... Oh, snap. I opened, I opened both doors. But that means you can close both doors. Which is cool. <laughs> but as I was saying, I, I like variation. But the station's called Patrick. Part... Oh no, not Pat. Partick can't read um I, I like variation like i think uh, but obviously as a business point like it's better to have this same similar built stock because then maintenance is a lot cheaper but then the thing is with individual lines like on the tube individual lines have separate depots they have separate teams and operation leaders and stuff like that that run the individual line so it doesn't really matter if like one line has this stock and one line has this stock because i don't think most like there's no like maybe there's some depots that have both integrated stocks in like um or both manage like some stocks from but two or more lines together but normally it's mainly just like one main depot or like a couple of depots for one line and it, there's no real like inter connecting with other lines and stuff like that so it really doesn't matter if 
like that's why it's great that now like you had like the Victoria line upgraded with 2009 stock and um, now you're going to have some like new Siemens trains on the Bakerloo line and Piccadilly line and then maybe at some point when the Central line gets updated we can have a, another train you know give Stadler a contract and have some Stadler metro trains you know that's the kind of thing like it, it would just it would just be like obviously from a train enthusiast kind of point of view from a train enthusiast point of view it's going to be you know great um from a passenger point of view that doesn't care about trains it doesn't really bother them right and we're at govan this is like typically the point when like most of the scenarios like or the activities that they're called uh, this is where they kind of like reset or like this is where you would time yourself to see if you've made the kind of full round trip but we are approaching now Ibrox where you know we're gonna have to fortunately call it a uh, call it a wrap on this video but it's been great to get back finally into Metro Simulator and I promise that I will be doing a lot more videos and content on it because there's actually stuff to cover and I'm actually pretty excited in covering it for you guys because there's quite a lot of stuff to actually cover. I probably will do something on like Ryan Dam next but I think the, the, the choice now is like quite a lot so bear with me if I take a bit of time deciding. I'm going to put the AI on now. It will do my work for me. I like that change of signal. That's quite nice. Well, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed my kind of little return here back into uh, uh, Metro Simulator and with like a really cool uh, kind of comeback in a way of... Uh, the Glasgow Metro, the Glasgow Subway, something like I did not expect would be in Metro Simulator, something that was very kind of like, um, kind of based obviously off like stuff in the Netherlands, so it's great to see that there's actually some uh, creators out there that are creating some uh, kind of uh, content that's actually a little bit more close to home here for us guys that are obviously from the UK. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I uh, definitely did. I'll probably return on this map to do a... Um, to do a um, outer line kind of video potentially at some point um, anything else you want me to do on this game please let me know um, as I said Ryan Dem is going to have a lot of kind of stuff to uh, to do because there's a lot of stuff with the new tram lines the new trains and stuff the new extensions and updates to some of the existing lines already in there there's like different uh, I think M1 um, has like a different variant of um, like in peak times it terminates at a different terminus at one point in the middle of the city there's there's so much stuff and I'm, I'm really looking forward to actually covering it and driving some of those lines for you um, again, the shoutouts in this video go to Thomas Walsh and Nahum Yoa. That's again Thomas Walsh and Nahum Hum Yoa. I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Their links and stuff will be down below. Show them some love. And um, special shout out to Kurt Stewart, first member of the uh, channel. Again, that's just something voluntary. If you guys want to support my channel uh, with some extra love, uh, you can press the join button and uh, pay a subscription fee for some perks and stuff like that. To, help me and support me on my YouTube channel. Guys, take care. Have a lovely day. I will see you guys in the next one. I think I'm gonna be a little calm on this one. <laughs> okay, watch on my wrist, skate in my vans. Flow so sick, put the flowers in the van. Maserati, body on my Scotty too. Hottie got the fam that's overseas. So if I